Okay, so now we have this IKFK curve. And as we've said in the previous tutorial, it's going to be a bit pointless if we've got all these curves of separate curves. Because we can only, only add an attribute to one of these. So it would be good if we could just select, or if this curve was a whole singular curve. And there's ways to connect curves with the curve tools, but it's not going to be good for stitching these together because we don't really want to edit the shape of these curves because we quite like them. So a quicker way to do this, if we just select these curves, and here in the outliner, I'm just going to rename these curve. Well, we're just going to rename these afterwards. But just bear in mind that curve seven is a global control which we haven't renamed yet. So with these, if I just go to display and shapes we can actually start to see the shape nodes inside the outliner so everything's got a shape node so if we expand these curves we can see that actually it's a curve one and then a curve shape underneath so basically what we want to do is take all these curve shapes so if you select them all and put it under one curve so get all these curve shapes into one so we select all the curves, curve shapes, and we don't select the last one, but we actually select the group it's in. And then we run a bit of mel, which will be parent dash r dash s for shape, and then we just hit enter. And what that's gone ahead and done. So if we try to actually manually select these and hit shift P and parent, it's not going to let us do it. It's going to bring these different nodes along with it. So doing it through Mel is going to hard code that in and it's going to allow us to do it. So again, that's parent space dash R space dash S with those selected and the, la the last group selected. So we can see in here it's put them all in the same shape. So if I just go to display and I hide shapes we can now see that actually there's just one curve 8 and if we actually look in the channel box you can see that curve 8 contains curve shape 8, 12, 11, 10 and 9 which are those different characters that we like the K, the dash, the F and the K so now we can just delete and we can rename these if we want but it doesn't really matter too much we can leave them blank if we want at the moment so now we've got all these as one curve so we can see here selecting any part of this is going to select curve 8 so this is great now we can add any attributes to this and just select it whenever we want so with this I'm just going to go to modify center pivot or if you've added it to yourself and then I'm just going to grid snap it back over here and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees get it up and rotate it the wrong way so rotate it minus 90 so I'm just going to get this within that sort of arrow shape at the front so basically and then delete history freeze transformations and then we can go to the object display draw in overrides and we can turn that to yellow if we want or we can turn it to turn it to like a pinky colour and we can see here it's actually going to just change that one colour so and also you can see in here we've got the curve shape 8 selected so we could assign this enable overrides on each one of these or we could just do it to the actual curve F8 which all those shapes were parented to so display drawing overrides enable overrides we'll just select that pinky colour so that way we can just differentiate, differentiate it from this global control and then with this we're just going to have it selected shift select the global control curve and just hit P to parent that and then we can select the translate and scale and rotate and visibility and just lock and hide selected because this control is basically going to have the custom attributes for all the IK and FK inside the rig so we're never going to need to rotate or move this so locking those just means we can marquee select both of these objects but if we're moving them about you can see we're not moving the IKFK control so 
Now we're going to go ahead and rename these. So the curve, so cc underscore global zero one. And we'll call this global underscore ik fk. And we can just call this global dis for display. It doesn't really have any purpose, that circle, it's just there to make this differentiate this sort of control curve from any other. So there we go, we've got the IK and FK control at the front. But we don't really have any attributes on this at the moment. So what we want to do is we want to add an IK FK switch for the arms. So I'm just going to go to Edit, Add Attribute and this will bring up this window and we're going to give it a name which will be um, L underscore arm so L underscore arm underscore IK I'll do that in capitals IK FK and I'll copy that and what we want here is we want a float so a float value basically we can add in different attributes in here, so it's vector integer string, boolean, enum and float and we want a float which stands for floating point, so that's decimal point, so we can have from 0 to 0 0.5 100, any value we want to specify, and in here I'm going to give a minimum of 0 a maximum of 1 and default of 0 and this basically means that it's going to lock it to between 0 and 1, so 0 will be either IK and then 1 will be FK. And we'll just click Add. And then I'll paste the name in again. Change this to Right. We'll add in a minimum of 0, maximum of 1, default of 0. And you can see here that I've got a lowercase r and arm, lowercase but you can see in the attributes added it as uppercase but when we're if you ever need to query this in Mel it's usually best if we stick to the lowercase version because it is actually using this name in here and just click add so we've got the IK and FK switch to the left and right and you can see in here middle mouse clicking and dragging on these we can go between 0 and 1 so I'll set these both to 0 and then for this global control I'm going to move this and move it into the global move and we can put this inside the control object for the moment and we're going to leave it in the control object for the moment but later on when we set this up as a global control we will probably remove it from there but we'll get into that later on so now we're going to add in the IK FK switch so what I'm going to do now actually, I'm just going to stop the video here and in the next video, just so we can start from where we are, we'll start the IK and FK switch in the next tutorial.